everybody. This is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation into glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be on here tonight to be sharing glory stories. It's just something that the Holy Spirit has put on my heart. Um, I'm going to have a live guest tonight, and I can't wait for her to be on here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you're logging in just now, we'll just say, hey, tell me where you're, you're watching from. I'll give a few minutes for everybody to to log in. I'm just excited to see what the Lord's going to do tonight. Hey, Gary, how are you? I just got done interviewing a lady who had a um, gold tooth put in. I know I didn't have a grid for it, but uh, my husband released it in the atmosphere and I gave her a gold tooth. So her uh, testimony will be coming out soon. We can Hey, Jody. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Hey, Dad. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. So, yeah, I'm so excited to interview you tonight about the glory. And uh, thank you. I'm so excited to be I here. Know. It's, it's going to be good. I know. That's all right. It always takes a minute to adjust the camera. So, just bear with us, guys. And yeah, yeah. I've got go, uh, <laughs> co director and co founder of Warriors Heart and Women's Equipping Network. And uh, she also is a uh, TV show producer of Signs Following with JC, and I'm just excited. <laughs> He's sitting in Dennis' chair, Gary said. That's awesome. I met a lot of Jody's team <laughs> out in California, some amazing <laughs> leaders like Gary, and uh, just excited to have you on tonight. We just got back from Women on the Front Lines and got wrecked in the glory, and I was just telling everybody how I just did an interview on a uh, a tooth, a gold tooth that just came into the atmosphere and really meant a lot to a woman. She was in tears today. She shared her testimony, so I can't wait to get that out. But enough of me. Yeah. Let's, let's hear about you. So let's, let's let you share one of your beginning stages of when you went in and, and felt the glory or felt God's presence. People use different langos. Some people say glory. Some people like presence. Just describe to me the first time you felt his presence. Where it was at, what it felt okay. like. Yeah, well, I mean, I remember really well because I was at um, in Reading mm -hmm. at the Healing and Impartation Conference mm -hmm. that Randy Clark and Bill Johnson had. And um, it was so neat because we, I just felt really like atmospheric, like God's presence to such an extent. I didn't really know what it was. <laughs> like I didn't, yeah. I didn't use the term like it's the glory. I didn't know. It was just presence. Amen. And I felt like a very heavy weight. Amen. And there was a lot of really cool stuff going on. A lot of love. Like I really felt a lot of love in the room. Amen. And that's something I associate with um, God's presence. Amen. But I felt heavy weight so that'd be more like the kabod um type of glory where it just kind of feels like somebody put like um sandbags you know on your shoulders Amen. or on top of your head that's what it feels like to me like when you feel the heavy weight or when you're in the dentist chair so Gary you can get yeah, this one that's right. and you have x-ray and they put that thing over your chest to protect you it's like that that's what Cindy. the kabod glory me feels like yeah so one of the, the scriptures that i love sharing is uh, as we do this interview i know me and you both have a passion for the glory of god and one of the reasons i'm doing these interviews is to teach that the everyday person child of god son and daughter we have access to the glory and i know um, in Ezekiel 44, 4, the glory filled the temple. And a lot of people, I just like to teach them to understand we are the glory temple. We are the temple of God. 
We are to be filled yeah. with his glory. And 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, don't you know you're the temple? So share share a little bit about you went there, you felt the glory for the first time. Just to walk mm-hmm. out that process with me. What did that stir in your heart? What did it make you hungry for? How did it make you feel? Just go for it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, it, it rocked me, like, first of all, because I was like, what is this? Like, I... I really like challenged me too because I thought, you know what, I really don't know what. So, did it challenge your theology or no? It didn't challenge my theology. It it challenged my understanding and my revelation of, like I had felt God's love and God's presence, but when you feel it like that, like all around you, um, in the atmosphere, um, it's just a whole different level. Mm -hmm. So it made me just, it made me very, very hungry, hungry, hungry. You know, and they. For yeah, God. they say that hunger. Yeah, not for a taco. <laughs> I like tacos. I'm, yeah, no, for God. Yeah. No, I love tacos. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we were like Starbucks, actually, with us, right? That's right. True. That holy hunger, yeah. like really that holy hunger, because it was like, oh my gosh, there is, I mean, and we use that term, like there is more, yeah. and Randy Clark has a book, and fun. it just set me like on this path where I started doing all this stuff with global awakening and taking classes. And it was just this intense, like, I just have to know more about this and have more of this, like never satisfied, never the same. Amen. Amen. So would you say that, that after you tasted the glory, would you say that as you pursued, it created hunger inside of you, it made you excited, made you know there was more out there. Was there <laughs> books that you read to cultivate this? Was there worship you did? Just kind of kind of tell me how this helped you transition. Hey, Regina. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I had read like The Fear of the Lord with John Bevere, which is one of my favorite <laughs> books a couple of years prior, probably two wow. years prior to that, which really did create like more of that kind of hunger um, but this, at this level, yes, I did. I took the classes with Global Awakening. So I took, um, physical healing, inner healing, deliverance, prophetic classes, all these classes. So they had a ton of books that went with them, Amen. like listening to videos um, of Heidi Baker <laughs> and Rodney Hope, and all these people. So yeah, Leif Hetland, like when Leif Hetland, I went to Voice of the Apostles with Global Awakening. I went to conferences. I learned to soak. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so, Amen. oh yeah, it went woo, like zero to 60. So I'm also, I'm also teaching about soaking. So if you had somebody on here that, that, that maybe, maybe you're watching right now and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and you're like, what are they talking about? Like, I have no clue. Yeah. Glory. What do they mean? And we're just talking about the presence of God. So if you don't, if you don't on here and you never said Jesus Christ, just be my Lord and Savior. Just ask him to, to come into your heart. Just say, come to my heart, Jesus. Make yourself real to me. I want to know you. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And, and just just touch me with the glory that they're talking about. Let me feel what they felt and just reveal yourself to me and God will do it. And if you're on here and you don't have a grid for soaking, I'm just going to let um, Jody kind of describe as she's got closer with the Lord, what's some things that she did to, to cultivate the glory in her life or presence? Well, I think number one is that a lot of us aren't really, you know, knowledgeable about the concept of receiving God's love. Like we think, you know, we love the Lord, but many times, even though we love at a certain level, we don't know how to receive his love. So I think that soaking is all about positioning ourselves to receive his love. Mm -hmm. Like I've heard people say, like Bill Johnson says, I'm just going to sit here like right now, you could just put Mm -hmm. your hands in the air and sit here and say, Lord, I'm just going to let you love me. Now, for a lot of us, it's hard to receive because of the, you know, lack of acceptance of ourself, forgiveness of ourself. So really, it's a way of, of really getting comfortable with just receiving from the Lord. So if you put on some music that maybe doesn't have a lot of words Amen. and you're just like kind of just resting in the Lord and not doing anything Amen. except focusing on him. And really, again, it's like just hey, letting him. Hey, hey mom. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> that is. <laughs> that's life changing. It's life changing. It will challenge you. It will um, 
you know, it will also challenge you to be able to sit still, <laughs> right? To not do anything, oh like to not think about, I wonder who's texting me <laughs> or wonder, you know, what's going on. But just to be like, Jesus, I'm just going to be with you yeah. because I love your presence. Yes. I love your intimacy. Intimacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really a beautiful thing. So would you thing. say that, that cultivating the presence of God and, and just the glory of God, that your intimacy with the Father or with Jesus or with Holy Spirit, you know, it's the Godhead three in one mystery. You know, it's just the mystery. Would you say that, that it, as you describe the hunger, that would you say that yeah. like the transformation and the intimacy level changed with you? Just kind of talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely um, was able to, it really like, I think it, it breaks down strongholds and some of yeah. the ways that we're thinking, you know, like we don't even realize the issues that we have, <laughs> you know, in our head, theologically with believing lies. So it breaks down a lot of those just being able to be intimate yeah. um, with the father to just receive his love. So it definitely like his presence is, I've always been a presence person, yeah. so I always love the presence. God. But there are times like when, you know, and this is really like tender, you know, for me, but I'll like mm -hmm. wake up in the morning and I'll just feel God's presence all around me. Or I'll go have my quiet time, mm -hmm. you know, like in the living room and I'll just feel God's love. I'll feel his presence surround me. And it's the most beautiful thing to me in the whole world. Like that's what everything in, in your walk, everything in your life, that's worth everything. That's actually what we're going to be spending eternity Amen. doing right with her. and that's where everything comes out of a heart of love a heart of devotion allowing god to mm. break down because it does it breaks down all those hard things like do you really love me lord mm -hmm. you know do, if i have prayers that aren't answered yet or things i'm waiting for it's like do you really care do you really hear me do you really move when i say something mm. like randy clark says faith means that when I believe that when I speak, things happen. Amen. But do I really believe that, that when I say something, that things actually happen? When I pray for you, when I ask for God to move in your life, do I really believe Amen. it? So I think it challenges and breaks down those types of barriers to just being able to really receive God's love. Amen. And I know you ooze love and mercy and compassion. That's one of your one of your top gifts because I just know you personally and I celebrate that with you. It's so awesome to watch the mercy of God flow, but it's it's because you are a good receiver. You know, just just as you were talking, you know, um, the Lord, as you were saying, you sat there and you got in God's presence. As, as soon as you said that, God said Psalms forty six ten. Be still and know that I'm God. And, and so Amen. you're able to um, pour out mercy and pour out compassion because you take the time to be still. So for, for people that are new to the glory and, you know, they've went to this conference or that conference and it's taken a while to cultivate. Can you kind of walk them through what the process may look like? as you're as you're getting closer in intimacy because we know there's there's ebbs and flow but it's really us that ebb and flow does that make sense just from yeah. not being still so any tips and anything you could just describe of you know sometimes it's overnight people get saturated in glory and then sometimes it's the the process yeah, I think, um, I think that you have to really run after yeah. it like it, it has to just be something that is you know, so important to you that you just can't live without it. Yeah. Like you have to and realize Chastity. that God's presence is Chastity. everything. So when you're running, like you're at a conference, mm -hmm. you're doing something like that, that you're, um, when they have like a time, like I don't, April, if you want to talk about what impartation is yeah. or when you go for prayer yeah. or, you know, asking for a prophetic word or, or when you're at a conference, you run, you run after it. But at the same time, we have to watch that like anxiety mm -hmm. and that um, striving yeah, that we're good. running for God, we're hungry for God, we're running for God, and rest. but it's out of, of yeah, yeah and, and out of his chest, mm -hmm. right? Would you say that, April? Yeah, there, there's such a refreshing when you minister out of the glory, you know, when, when you just allow the Holy Spirit to, to call um, healings and miracles, you know, out in the atmosphere, there, there's a, a refreshing 
as you grow closer to God and you get closer with his intimacy, that gives you strength. There's, there's, like you said, there's no striving, and you know, we're impartation, or, or, uh, Paul and Timothy, where it talks about, you know, I desire that you just impart to me spiritual gifts. You can get a somebody that right. walks in the glory, that soaks in the presence, just to impart to you. But then you have to cultivate it, right? It's like you get filled up with God, and then, like they say, we leak, right? That's right. <laughs> I wish we could just stay full. Lord, we just declare we stay full all the time. But uh, you were talking about strongholds. And there may be some people on here that are kind of new to the glory and to God. And maybe they don't know they have a stronghold. Or maybe they don't understand what a stronghold is. So just share a little bit about a stronghold. Yeah, so um, areas, areas of our life where we're believing a lie. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, a belief might be that, you know, um, that God can't really love me where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Or um, if everybody knew, you know, how I really am, they wouldn't accept mm -hmm. me. Or just yeah. things that we believe, yeah, that are lies. Yeah, they do indicate, like April's saying, they're indicating an area where we're believing a lie and a stronghold would be like rejection. Yeah, so yeah. we believe a lie. So the enemy has an open door, um, you know, to deceive us. So aligning ourselves, praying that we're aligned perfectly with the word of God, yeah. taking every captive, this process, right? Mm -hmm. This process that takes so long <laughs> <laughs> in our Christian walk. You know, that, yeah. Amen. Yeah. It just takes a long time because we're God's maturing us, mm -hmm. you know, like one of my favorite sayings about the glory with, you know, Bill Johnson says the glory of God on an unsanctified mm -hmm. vessel will crush Come it, on. but on a sanctified one will establish Amen. it well, in order to, you know, be established. That doesn't happen overnight. Amen. Like everyone has different time frames, but I've been a Christian 31 years. Mm -hmm. So this has been a continual process of refining, a surrender, a laying things down because we want more room for the, glory. For the Holy Amen. Yeah, more room for the glory yeah. to actually come out of us like a light shining, you know, in the darkness, yeah. like his light shines out of us. Or in John, it says, he who believes in me from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's a bunch of big stones in the way, yeah. you know, all these strongholds, the water's not flowing, you know, swiftly. I need to keep removing and allowing God to remove those things out of my life that hinder my ability to rest in him, to understand what he's doing, to receive other people's love too, like community. Amen. Super important. Amen. That's so good. And, and even as you're speaking, I can like hear a word of knowledge of somebody saying, why would God let me carry his glory? Why? They keep asking their self. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but as you watch the replay or as you're watching this already, you're saying, why would God allow me to carry his presence? So Jody, you want to just speak a little bit about why would God allow us humans in all of our processes and refinements and humanism at the same time be a glory carrier well one thing i think of is like in the old testament the lord says talking about worshiping and sometimes it just froze there, there it goes it's coming back okay so i was saying he in the old testament it says god says regarding worshiping idols i will not share my glory amen. with another amen. some people get confused about who we are Amen. because God, we are not another. We're his children, Amen. his sons and we're image bearers. We're made in his image and we're a temple of the Holy spirit. Amen. So like the verse that April referred to earlier, it was Ezekiel 44, yeah. four, Amen. right? So the glory of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord. How many times, if you look in the word is the word glory, in the Bible. It's a lot. Uh, Look it up. Amen. Look up how many word glory is there. So we are um, carriers of God's glory. So it's, it's a right, a birthright. It's your inheritance. Mm -hmm. He's our, our father, our daddy, and he loves us and he wants the world to see his light. He, it's the renown of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's one of the definitions of glory. 
Another one is to flourish, to expand. It expands and moves. The glory of God is not um, stagnant. It's moving, it's expanding, and it's atmospheric. And so God wants us to carry his glory. Think if we all (laughs) surrendered to a point and loved to a point and received his love to a point that the glory just, think of it like bouncing back and forth between all of us and just covering the whole atmosphere. So I, I don't know why Holy Spirit's going here, but I know you can answer it because <laughs> I just trust him. Oh. <laughs> but but he, he's talking about frequencies because everything was God's first. You know, the, mm-hmm. the occult or whatever, new age, whatever kind of steals are the God's birth, the supernatural. So talk a little bit about, you know, as we worship, there's frequencies, there's sounds, there's lights in the spirit realm. And and it was quantum physics. It was God's first. He made it. He designed it. So talk a little bit about the frequencies of the glory or maybe things you've heard, been exposed to about the frequency or read. Just Holy Spirit said to go there. <laughs> I've read a little bit of the quantum glory but i don't think i can articulate that part of it but it's so interesting and there is a video Uh, i have the book but i can't remember the guy's last name it's phil uh yance no phil something but but the glory um steve swanson has a great book on symphonies of heaven and i saw it with patricia king um one time and it was so good and patricia king is known to be a glory carrier Mm -hmm. um but Steve Swanson talked about how, like, when we worship, that we're not creating. We're actually stepping into what God's already doing. Amen. So there's already a sound in heaven. There's already um, noises and vibrations and sound going on in heaven. And it, we listen and say, Daddy, can we step in? So the sounds and vibrations, the frequency of heaven mm-hmm. is not something out of, you know, it's not something from the dark Amen. side. This is. God owns that, and there are sounds of heaven. And when we we speak, when we sing, our voices vibrate. When there's drum beats, when even you know a dog barking or a cricket, mm-hmm. there are sounds um, that are released. And I believe those shake. They shake the heavens. Mm-hmm. They shake the atmosphere. And that um, when we speak, it's like a shofar, you know, blowing. Amen. Like when we. Speak, out with power when we declare you know when we declare like the earth will be filled with the glory of yes the knowledge of the glory of god as the waters cover the sea habakkuk 2 15 so we're speaking out the word of god and then even angels are writing on our declarations and they're moving and they're they're and they're accomplishing things so there is like, I love the wind of the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. I love that. Like, I love to just watch. We talked about this, April, when we were in Minnesota. Yeah. Looking at the trees, the wind is blowing, and the trees, the leaves are blowing, you know, in the wind. And it reminds me of Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And the Bible talks about Holy Spirit being like the wind. You don't know where it comes from or where it's going, but you see the effects of the wind. Yeah. It's like that sound and vibration, you know, that, again, like, God's glory rides in on waves of love. That's one of my favorite um, sayings. And we had a conference called Waves of Glory one time. And I do believe that God's glory rides in on waves of love. It has to do with his love. I can't separate the glory of God from the love of God. I I know what you're talking about. Sometimes I, I can just wake up and I'll feel the love of the Father. And, you know, yeah. we just, we just, just pray that over each one watching now that if you've never felt the glory, we just, we just release the glory of God over you. And we just come together in unity and just say, Lord, just wake them up with your presence, wake them up with your presence. We just release it right now and just take them to a new level, take them to a new level and allow them to be still, give them the grace to be able to be still and, and be intimate with the father there's so much to be said in the word of God, but there's so much to encounter God in the glory. And, you know, yeah. everybody in the Bible encountered God. You know, there's so many encounters with God <laughs> and you can have encounters in the word of God. So I, I like to say it, it's the word of God and Jesus Christ is the door. And we were meant to encounter God. You know, the supernatural was meant for 
Jesus Christ and, and God's children to experience. So just, just talk about encounters for a minute, wherever you feel led to go, just go for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there were a couple of years where I really, I was really going to a lot of conferences and different things. And I had an opportunity to go to um, Arizona because it was my birthday <laughs> and there was a conference and it was like, it was a glory conference. <laughs> and I just thought, Oh my gosh, like how fun is that? That, that sounds fun, yeah, right guys? Amen. So I'm like, I'm going to go spend my birthday in the glory. And it was so cool. It was a David Herzog <laughs> and um, George Carl and Kevin Zadai um, spoke and I've never seen anything like it. And I was with a friend of mine and we walked out of there and I was just like, <laughs> what just happened? Like, how did we get here? Because in the glory, there are signs and wonders and miracles, and they were praying. There was angelic interaction. Amen. I'm talking about God's holy <laughs> angels, his messengers. Amen. People were being prayed for, and their legs were growing out, and people were getting healed. Amen. I mean, there was amazing, It there were amazing things <laughs> going on, let alone like the worship um, and feeling God's presence in worship. Amen. So when the glory of God is present, um, it's not just like business as usual. You're going to feel and encounter um, the Lord in different ways yeah. and in signs and wonders. Yeah, I've, I've heard people describe the glory in all different ways. I've heard them describe <laughs> it as fire, as heat. I mean, <laughs> you, you name it, like the wind of God, the breath of God, the weight of God, the joy of God. So it's just, it's just funny to hear everybody's language is a little bit different, but somebody's out there and it just keeps coming to me. I guess it's just a word of knowledge and you've had some maybe father wounds and, and, and maybe it's, it's blocked you from receiving the glory. So I just, I just want to stand in behalf of your dad and just repent right now. I just repent for, for not being maybe the father I should have been or not protecting you or, or just, um, any any word curses that they could that I just repent for speaking over you. I just stand in the gap as the father right now and just repent. Just just forgive your dad and, and just let go of any mistrust. Just say, Lord, I forgive my dad. I let go of mistrust. I just ask you, God, to bring in your glory to my heart. Sometimes I've experienced, and I know you probably can share on this too, Jody, but some inner healing, like emotional healing that nobody wants to talk about, but the Bible says he binds up our wounds for a reason. But sometimes there's a deep inner healing in the glory where nobody else can touch it. Like things are so painful that God just sets you free. So if that word's for you, just receive the glory of God. I just declare it just washes over that father wound right now. And I just want to speak over you that you are blessed. The Father in heaven loves you. He celebrates you. He thinks you're beautiful. I just want to speak to you that he thinks you're beautiful in Jesus' name. So if you want to share... Jody, um, has there been a time maybe in the glory that you've experienced either inner healing or deliverance or both where you've just got before the father? Yeah, I would say like even, um, this past week, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago when we were in, um, Minnesota, like we were worshiping yeah. and the worship was so yes, amazing. Was. Um, just some great worship leaders. Mm -hmm. And one of them was just um, doing prophetic worship where she was continuing to um, just speak mm -hmm. and, and prophesy. Um, she even had this great, a whole great prophetic word that she did in song for one of the leaders. It was, it was so beautiful. beautiful. It was yeah. I felt almost like, like we're worshiping. And then it was like, you're going to bow, you know, bow down. You're worshiping, bowing down. And it was almost like that, like that kabod kind of a glory where you're pushed like from behind just to your face. Amen. Like it was like, okay, forehead to the carpet. <laughs> yeah, I was there too. <laughs> I was so there. Yes, you so, were. And so you're, you know, forehead to the carpet and God's just dealing with me with some stuff like just continued, you know, forgiveness. Like we, we do the best we can, right guys? Like we all want to, we want to obey God and we want to do, um, what he says to do. And sometimes there's just deeper layers of things that we don't want to um, hold, but there's constantly things come up too. Yeah. There's lots of hurts in life. There's betrayal. There's, 
fear. There's a lot of stuff. So that's a time when you're just on your face before the Lord. And sometimes with tears, <laughs> with me, it's always my tears. So. <laughs> I'm the one that when you go to a conference or something, you put Kleenex in all your pockets, you know, so you have. <laughs> Amen. You uh, yeah, it's funny but, that you mentioned you know. that because different people respond to the glory in different ways. Like some people shake, some people hit the ground, some people mm -hmm. cry. I mean, there's so many different manifestations of God's presence. Some of them describe it. I know there's times where it feels like the lightning God, the lightning rods of God, where it's just the throne room of God and his presence is so strong. Sometimes it's just that fire that people feel. But yeah. as soon as we got on here, we were kind of talking about this because the Lord kept speaking to me, passionate pursuit, passionate mm. pursuit, passionate pursuit. So just describe like, if there's if there's one thing that you think would, would help people cultivate the glory of God in their life and, and passionate pursuit, just speak into that a little bit. Well, I think that in, in the way that I look at it, it's a constant laying down. Mm -hmm. Like you go through the things in life that kind of like that, you know, the Bible says is iron sharpens mm -hmm. iron. You know, so you go through and things come up and you surrender to God and you lay them down and you repent and you, you know, lay things down to God and you let him remove those things from your life. So your, your passionate pursuit of him is going to change you. Mm -hmm. And um, I've heard someone talk about that too before that you're going to, it's going to affect you. If you're in the glory of God, you're not going to stay Amen. the same. So put yourself in that position again, remembering that the glory of God on an unsanctified vessel will crush it, but on a sanctified one will establish it where you're going into territory that, you know, could be a little challenging, a little risky here because it's going to, you're going to take away those things. God's going to take away those things that are not of him. When you passionately pursue him, it's transformation. It's laying down, surrendering um, the things that aren't of him. And again, process, have we arrived? No, <laughs> no we have not arrived. We're, in process, yeah. right? So that's passionate pursuit to me is like saying, it's okay, I'm still going to lay it down. It hurts, ouch, you know, things happen in life, but instead of getting bitter or angry or just saying, forget it. Because again, the, you know, I have a friend of mine that talks about how the closer that you get to God, the fewer people are around you, right? Yeah. Because like even Jesus, there were 120 in the upper room yeah. and then, you know, 70 at one point and it down to there's one at the cross, yeah. right? Yeah. So it, there's less and less because it's hard. It's hard to lay everything down, but allowing God to refine you, allowing him to take away those things that are um, the areas of woundedness and hurt in your life and continually passionately pursuing him. Like um, at one point, like I quit my job a couple of years ago. Yes, and share that. I, I love that story. Yeah. I, mean, I wanted to give her room, guys, to share it. But it's an awesome <laughs> story about the faithfulness oh. of God. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, so a couple years ago I'd been really since the time I became a Christian so I'm 23 years old and I give my life to the Lord radical mm -hmm. transformation heals me of alcoholism you know overnight um Ooh, come on but a lot of, it took a lot of years Amen. you know so the transfer taken taking a long time but um somebody invites me to go to to church with them and I tell them I'll go to church with you if you go to a bar with me <laughs> so I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so she did so I did and I'm standing in church going oh my gosh something's wrong with me I'm more comfortable in a bar so God like radically um, just transformed my life and I always wanted to be in full-time ministry I know there's marketplace ministry there's all kinds of good stuff my mountain has always been really religion. I always wanted to be in full-time ministry. I wanted to help hurting women mm. and I want to help hurting men now too, but always like from the time I was 23, I want to help hurting women. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, God waited till I'm in my fifties <laughs> and, um, told me to quit my job. So one day he says, um, I want you to go ahead and, you know, resign trust me, I'm your shepherd, I will take care of you. So immediately, because I've read and studied enough, like, you know, Joyce Meyer talks about how when God asks you to do something, he gives you the grace to obey him if you do it right away. 
So I got right up oh, from my oh. quiet time and wrote my letter of resignation um, right away and um, went in that day and resigned. And then, you know, from that point, like you could say, oh, I have faith for, you know, finances and for God to take care of me because I don't have, I didn't have any way to take care of myself. Um, and he promised, but until you walk through Amen. it, you know, that deeper level of faith, like I have much more faith than I had two years ago. And he continues to challenge with things like that. Like I just sold my house. So it's like, that's a little scary. Yeah. It's like, oh my so, gosh, so you know, yeah. Speak okay. about, so you cultivated, what you're talking about is you cultivated his presence. You learned to hear his voice. And, and do you want to share mm -hmm. a little testimony about what he spoke to you to do about selling your house? What did you, ha what did you step out and sacrificially do? And then boom, your house sold. Oh, <laughs> okay. What are you doing? Like, like you're on the spot because yeah, uh, of nowhere. Yeah. So I was, we were in a, a conference um, and somebody was speaking and they were talking about financial blessing and about really doing an offering that would really focus on freedom um, from financial burdens. So it was specifically for that. And it's a, um, it was Joan Hunter, who is a, a healing minister, powerful woman of God, neat lady. Um, so I sat there and I was going to give a certain amount in tithe. And God spoke to me and said more, more than twice as much as what I was going to mm -hmm. give, which actually, um, that was money that was going to pay my mortgage, honestly. So I was like, okay, Lord, oh, I trust you. you if you want me to do that, I do that. So, um, I give that money. And then that day I got a phone call from my realtor saying that my house sold. Yeah. Amen. So, um, this, like what April's talking about, this obedience and refining and working through things and then letting things go, you know, like to let go of your house is a little bit of security, right? You know, um, so letting that go. At one time, I was just like, okay, Lord, okay. if you want, if you want me to just leave all my furniture, like if yeah. you just want me to give everything, like if you want someone to come in and just buy my house fully furnished where I have absolutely nothing because I just want to run with you. And I want to do this passionate pursuit, like on steroids, right? Like, and that hurt, but I got to that point where I was like, Amen. okay, if that's what you want, yeah. I can do it. Yeah. You know, so it is a continual process when we pursue him. He is going to refine <laughs> us and it is going to accelerate. And that's what I love, like at, over and over through throughout this interview, the Holy Spirit keeps speaking to me, surrender, 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 surrender. So if you want more of his glory, you have to surrender more. And then if you want more of his glory, you have to, it's time. It's, it's speaking to the father. It's being real for before the father. And, and that was one of the things I just always loved about your real I love the honesty that you just shared with everybody and that you are generally, you model that passionate pursuit, whatever he tells you. I mean, you have the Holy Spirit, even as I was speaking to you, he told me to have you impart the faith for finances because you did walk away from a very um, good paying job. You, you didn't lose anything. You had more than enough, you know. I know times it was it's plowing through and it was a little hard. But yeah. you, never, <laughs> you never lost your house, didn't lose your car, didn't starve to death. And he's been faithful. So if you want to, just pray. Maybe for somebody on here, they, they just need more supernatural faith for um, maybe their electric bill or whatever it is. Just, just pray whatever you feel led. Yeah, so... Um... Daddy, I just um, ask that you would just you would just release an extra measure of faith for everybody watching, Lord, that anybody who is struggling um, financially, anyone who's trying to take risk steps, like moving into new seasons and new things, that you would just impart right now, just release faith, release the faith yeah. that um, you are our shepherd and you will take care of us, that you promise us. Your word says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. So I just release that faith mm -hmm. and, and also your love. Cause I love to release daddy's love. Yeah. So I just release your, your love, your nurture love for more of you that you would just release. I release a holy hunger yeah. for more of 
you that that people would passionately pursue you and for obedience that when you say something even if it's scary <laughs> that we just step out and say yes and we just ask for more because i need more yeah. and we all need more more faith amen in Jesus. Amen. More faith. Thank you for doing that. More faith, more glory. And, and even as you said that, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about risk. So I love the fact that I, I know you're a risk taker and, you know, there's something exciting about being a risk taker for Jesus, you know, and, yeah. and he's always blessed it. You know, he's always moved. We could swap testimonies and stories, you know, but I'll never forget this one time. I know there's somebody on here and I feel led to share this story where I was just beginning to prophesy back in the beginning days when I just got to know Holy Spirit. And I, I just risked it with this lady in the restaurant and she just like started crying, like overwhelmed from a prophetic word. And that's just part of the risk with the Holy Spirit. You know, it, it just truly touched her. So just share. It can be prophetic. It can be glory. It can be anything in the supernatural. Just share about some time. I know you risked with finances, but I know you're a huge risk taker in multiple areas because <laughs> that's the gift of faith that you have. So just share about one risk that you really just seen the reward on or were was amazed by. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a specific one. Um, really just living a lifestyle of risking that if God says, you know, go, you go. Yeah. And it is hard because you don't know um, what's on the other side. Like I, I might be a little bit different, you know, personality than a lot of people. Um, but if you ask me like, what's your five-year plan? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, it's like, Jesus. it's whatever Holy Spirit says. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know my one month plan, you know, so that's just how it is. He'll say risk, step out, you know, I'll take care of you. I will move, you know, so everything from quitting my job and starting a ministry, um, co-founder, you know, starting this and, um, every conference we put on every, everything we step out and do. Um, when I was in, uh, there was a, a speaker in Fresno one time that came and he was talking about harvest revival, stadium revival. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. And I actually just signed up went to a conference in North Carolina <laughs> all by myself. <laughs> you know, Stepped right out now. for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. All by myself. Like it, that's a risk. You know that you guys, that's it's not, money. Like, it's time. It's money. It, it is everything. It's um, going alone somewhere. I don't know anybody. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's like dad's saying, like, I get that hunger. Like, it's like, go, 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 you know? And it was so interesting because that's actually where I met April. Oh. <laughs> yes, it was. Was that that? Was, that was awesome. Harvest Power School. Yeah, that was awesome. That's, it was so amazing and so um, fulfilling, and I learned so much. And I went by myself, but every night, like there was a group of women, like in my room, and we were praying and hanging out. And so I wasn't alone. Dad took care of me. I met some great people, including I met April, uh -huh. and. One time, um, Brazil, like I heard someone talk about Brazil with um, Global Awakening. And I was like, oh, my gosh. That's what I usually do is like, oh, my gosh, I want to go. I want to go. And all I heard was God just go. Said, go. Yeah. Yeah. go. It was capital G-O, too, <laughs> when he said, it was like, capital G-O, go. So I signed up and went. Yeah. You know, so it's just risking in a lot of different areas, not just things having to do with finance, but, like, I mean, you get up and go across the country, mm -hmm. you know, by yourself. I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I did the same thing when I went to that glory, um, glory school in uh, Arizona. It was like, I just signed up and by then, myself. I just went. My friends went with me, <laughs> thank God. And we had a blast. But she was like, I want to go with you. It's your birthday. You know, but I just signed up by myself because I'm just like, if God says to go, if I feel, even if I don't hear, I can the feel the pull. God, the tug of God. Yeah. Just being like, go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. So everyone's different. We all need different mm -hmm. things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Falling. So not everybody is going to be called to do the same yeah. things or go the same places yeah. or, or risk in the same way. And that's okay. You yeah. know, we all just have our own walk. Um, but when God tells me to go, I'm going, I am going. And that's getting easier and easier as I do let things go, mm -hmm. you know, as I do let like my house and <laughs> 
<laughs> my job, you know, different things. Those things don't tie me down now. Yeah. I'm more mobile and I can go because I just want to serve him. Amen. That's all I want. I love people. I want to minister just like you, April. Yeah. We just want to love on people and minister to people yeah. and fulfill God's calling on our yeah. lives. So that's one of the things that the Lord keeps highlighting me about you is, is your gift of faith. You have a high gift of faith. And I see the Lord just even increasing that right now as we speak. So I just declare that over you. Mm. I just declare an in, increase to the gift of faith that she carries in every arena's so I just have to celebrate that with you. And, and that's one of the things that if you're going to carry the God, the glory of God and you're going to lay it down and you're going to surrender and, and you want to grow and you have that supernatural hunger for his glory, you hit every point on the head because it's, mm -hmm. it's a be still, it's that surrender, yeah. it's that risk. And, and I know you went to Brazil, so let me allow you to share a testimony about maybe like a crazy miracle. I don't care who did it, where at, like in the glory. Just, just say, because the atmosphere is heaven. It, it's God's presence. So anything can happen in the glory. So share one of your favorite testimonies. Gosh, <laughs> um, Brazil was so amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was mind blowing. Like again, we went with Global Awakening and it was a ministry trip. So we ministered in churches. So my very favorite thing, um, we did a fire tunnel for a group of pastors, male and female pastors. Um, we did it. It was the conference. Like it was one of the first days of a conference. So we're ministering. Um, there were people actually like there was a, a, a female pastor that when they were ministering, she ran up to the stage and just threw like a bunch of pills and wow. stuff in a bag wow. um, on the stage. Nice so job. here is you know, people just getting free, like laying down and publicly, right? Because they're known to be very passionate in Brazil. Yeah. They really love the Lord. They sing loud and cry out. <laughs> I love it. It was so fun. But they're passionate. So she's not like hiding stuff and go through it in the garbage. She runs up on the stage, <laughs> you know, she just lays it down. So I run up yeah. there and I'm hugging her and we're both crying and that's like, I mean, to me, that's beautiful. Talk about the example of leadership, mm. not hiding, going, oh, I got it all together here. Yeah, you know, I'm to catch me saying that because I don't. And <laughs> <laughs> amen. <laughs> we want to be examples yeah. of continuing to pull, you know, and, and to walk over things like that. So that was beautiful. There were a lot of physical um, miracles that I saw. And what I liked is a lot of them, they did not touch. Nobody touched them. Yeah. They were just by faith. So they would show like a video or preach and give a testimony. And then by faith, people are just healed. No one's touching them, you guys. Nobody's yeah. doing anything. They're healed by faith, Man. by just faith, by picking that up. Because the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy, yeah. like it says in the book of Revelation. And when we testify, other people can get what we have. Like when April and I are talking about signs and wonders, the glory. We're talking about faith gifts and um, mm. all those. You can pick those up because the testimony of Jesus, we're talking about all this is from Jesus and for his glory. It's, it's the spirit of prophecy mm. and we can have it. And the freely give, freely receive mm -hmm. side of that, you know, that's what the word says, freely give, freely receive. So we get what we get, you know, where we go and then we can impart that yeah. to others. God gives the ability to give out whatever we have. So we do that freely in love, in love for others. Amen. And, and one of the things, even as you're talking, the Lord's reminding me, because um, that's one of the things I do when, when I'm interviewing people is God always highlights people's strength. Because as we're talking about the glory, you can impart your strength to the people watching. So the Lord is just highlighting your leadership gift. You know, you, were, you took a risk. You were co-founder. I know you plowed really hard. For Warriors Heart and Warriors Equipment Ministry, and I'm just amazed and proud of the leadership team there, and and all that that you guys have accomplished and still are accomplishing. It's amazing. So, um, just talk about maybe one of your lessons, and then we'll have you impart leadership. One of your most valuable lessons that you've learned in a role of leadership. Hmm. And you can take a minute. Yes. Yeah, you can think about it. Because I know that that's a deep uh, and wide topic. But I know there's some leaders on here 
that will just gain, you know, that's why, that's why I love interviewing people from all walks of life about glory, how they first experienced the glory of God and, and what God's speaking to them in this season and what they've been through, because there's so much male or female where we've all experienced God to a different level of glory or different level of healing. That's so powerful. So I know your leadership experience has really, you, you've really modeled that model of Christ. You know, you're not like a dictatorship and like competitiveness or jealousy or none of that. And so I know that you've learned some lessons when being a leader. Yeah, I just, I think um, one of my favorite scriptures that I read a long time ago about leadership is David shepherded with integrity of heart. Yeah. And there's more to that. Like it says like with skillful at them. Ooh. So I think that integrity of heart that in the face of, I mean, if you want to stand up and you want to be a leader, yeah. um, it's, you're going to get like pot shot at, you're going to get hurt. It's going to be hard. There's going to be betrayal. Yeah. Um, and laying that down and understanding that we're all in process yeah. and it's really hard. You guys, like there's times when things come at you. Um, beyond your control that are very hurtful and the enemy will try to use those to pull you back and to tell you it's not worth it yeah. stop yeah. do it you know just give up even intimidation can come at you and um, spiritual aspects but um, laying that down like not being as concerned like Jesus you know was led like a lamb to the slaughter, you know, and he didn't say anything. Mm. And there are times when there's nothing you can say mm. except just love people, understand that out of our brokenness, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about Jesus said, the enemy has nothing on me. Mm. And one translation says, because he has nowhere to put his hooks. And that's what we want to be. But it's such a process and such a laying yeah. down and a sacrifice. And, um, when you're in leadership, people will um, come against you. They will come at you with things. And to understand that, you know, to just really be like, I just want you whole and healed yeah. and I love you no matter what. So I think that's, you know, just one of the biggest, um, you know, lessons that I am continuing to learn is to not retaliate, not say anything back, to not, um, to just remain in love and in forgiveness. Yeah. It's hard, it's so good. but you and crowns, yeah. right? Like some of my friends that are on here right now <laughs> and you, April, that like God rewards, you know, he rewards us. He rewards righteousness, that purity of heart, yeah. you know, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. What do we want more, you know, to be right or to be refined, yeah, you know, to, to see God or to be seen as, as big in the eyes of man. Yeah. You know, we want purity of heart. And so I really want to be refined. And I really do want um, everybody to fulfill their calling. They're treasures. They're treasures. The people are treasures hidden in darkness often. Um, but we just continue to lay it down and walk in love, yeah. in sincere love. Yeah, you ooze the love of God. That's one thing I can say about you. It's that father's heart. You just you ooze that mama love heart. But one of the things I feel led, like like somebody's on here, and I don't know who this word is for. I'm not gonna you know say or even try to press in to find out because I just want to honor. But somebody's on here, and maybe they're saying, um, "Man, I'm leading, and it's tough." And maybe you should just. I just felt led to have you like impart the grace of integrity of heart that maybe they're, they're going through a purifying season and they just need a grace to, to help having like right motives. And I just felt such a heavy anointing that you, that you carry because you walk it out at the grace of integrity of heart. So just pray whatever you want to release with that. Okay. So um, first of all, like I just bind the spirit of intimidation yeah. in the name Ooh. of this, that anything at you, I just break every curse um, of words, every, um, curse against leadership coming at you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And we just buy all intimidation in Jesus mm -hmm. name that anything that would come at you that would try to bring divisiveness that would stop your leadership gift that would try to get you to stop and mm -hmm. um, not move yeah. forward. We break that off right now in the name of Jesus. And then we just release your love and your grace, daddy. We just release more of your love yes. that Papa just come and just move right now out over 
um, through the internet, through the phone lines, through into people's homes, into people's hearts, and just soften, um, soften hearts. I just release the nurture love of God, the nurture love of God that he is so proud of you and that you're doing good. And he sees um, your pain and he sees those areas that are so hard um, and times when you have you've laid everything down and people have come against you or you've been misunderstood or hurt by things that people have said. And I just say, don't give up. We in yeah. unity just say, yeah, don't give up of something that the world needs. You have, you carry so much and you're so beautiful um, men and women. You're the beauty that you carry inside of you, the image of God is so needed yeah. in the world. So we just release again yes. more of your love, God, more of your mercy, more of your yes. grace, and ask for people to come along to support them that would um, be able to encourage and support and minister to the people in leadership that are hurting because they need yeah. safe places where they can go to be ministered Amen. to. So um, the apostolic centers and places where you can go to gain healing, to just take the time to get healed, take the time um, to be refreshed and renewed. And just release that refreshment and renewal. Mm -hmm. Just that yeah. love of God, the nurture love of God. Let it just flow right now Amen. in Jesus' name. Yeah, and even as you were saying that, I just got a word of knowledge. Somebody needs to hear that your anointing matters. Your gifts matter. Whether you're anointed for the family mountain, whether you're anointed to you know, clean the offices, whatever you are, whatever your sphere of influence is, whether it's you're anointed to go to the grocery store, you know, you're a homemaker and you take care of your family, wherever your anointing is, you can carry the glory of God to the grocery store to, to heal somebody. You can carry the glory of God to the bank to get money out, to, to release a prophetic word over the banker. Your anointing matters. Your, you cultivating the glory. You getting intimate with Jesus Christ. You getting intimate with the Father. He wants to love on you in the glory. He wants you to feel his presence. He wants you to experience it, him, who he is. And that's what's going to happen in the glory is you're going to get to know the heart of God. Like what Jody was talking about, the nurturing love of God and, and to understand that he um, fills us so we can pour ourselves out for the world. You know, because the, the yeah. word says, you know, that the whole earth will be filled with this glory. Well, we have to take it out. Like Jody was saying, you know, risking, you know, going where he says go. Even if he just says go to your neighbor and, and, and declare healing over your neighbor and stepping into that. So it, it's, it's, it's great rewards when you risk for him. That's one of the things I love about Jody is, is she's a risk taker. And I know, man, time has flown, but I want you to share kind of what the Lord has, has been like prophetically, like prophetic round table. What has the Lord been speaking to you in this season and, and what, I know it's kind of like a sign and a wonder in your life when things manifest they, they're normally manifesting corporately we see that a lot in in prophets so let's just speak about how what's happening in your life is ha usually happening in the body so share what you've been seeing and the verses god's been giving you well it's it's really an exciting season um i feel like it's really a season of breakthrough and i believe also that like for me moving i'm going to be moving i feel like when I step over the threshold, when I move, that other things move. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just because of being a leader and a, a forerunner, mm -hmm. that sometimes God gives us symbolically, like what we're doing, he shows us that that's for the body. So I feel like it's a season of breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the whole landscape is changing, that it'll be unrecognizable, mm -hmm. that we won't even, it won't even look the same as it looks now. Mm -hmm. And that's like church culture or the big C part, <laughs> but, um, it's a celebration of walking into new things, but you know, there's transition before the new and there's transition after the new, like, <laughs> everybody you, loves you know? that word, right? The transition <laughs> yeah, word. Yeah. Come on. So even like right now, like I've been in transition waiting, like it's like a birthing, right? Cause we get so much of that feeling like the whole body of Christ is birthing right now. But even after I move, there's still transition yeah. because I'm going like now a new place and getting used to new, new things, territory. you know, so the, 
Lucy. Yeah. Things, and there's yeah. always change, you know, so and that's hard and it's challenging. I have a scripture I would like to yeah. read in Isaiah yeah. um, 61. The mighty spirit of Lord Yahweh is wrapped around me because Yahweh has anointed me as a messenger to preach good news to the mm-hmm. poor. He sent me to heal the wounds of the brokenhearted, to tell captives, you are free, to tell the prisoners, be free from your darkness. I am sent to announce a new season of Yahweh's grace and a time of God's recompense on his enemies to comfort all who are in sorrow, to strengthen those crushed by despair who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful bouquet in the place of ashes, the oil of bliss instead of tears, and mantles of joyous praise Mm. instead Mm. of spirits of heaviness. Because of this, they will be known, you will be known Mm. as mighty oaks of righteousness planted by Yahweh as a living display of his glory. You will restore ruins from long ago and rebuild what was long devastated. You will renew ruined cities and desolations of past generations. Mm. So we just pray that and just release over you right now in the name of Jesus. This is new. Did you hear that? New seasons of his grace. And you'll be mighty oaks of righteousness planted by Yahweh as a living display of his glory. Mm. So we just declare that like over each of you, that his glory goes out from you, that his glory emanates from the inside, from the inside, that light, that goodness, that grace, that as you continue to pursue him, as you, as you lay your life down, as you surrender to him, as you hunger for him and passionately pursue him, mm-hmm. that his glory becomes stronger and stronger and it emanates from you mm-hmm. and it shifts the atmosphere. It makes a sound, a roar, mm-hmm. and it, it shifts the atmosphere and it matters and it changes things. Your presence matters. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. So um, I just want to, I got a few words. Uh, what translation is that? Somebody's asking. That's the, the passion, passion translation. Oh, I love the passion. It's yeah. so good. So good. But yeah, yeah, thank you for reading that scripture. It was it, it's so powerful. I felt such an anointing on that. So um, yeah. I have a few words of knowledge, and I just want to give you a chance. If you had any words of knowledge, they could be watching now. They could be watching on the replay. Um, just go ahead and just share if you have anything that you want to share, if it's prophetic words, thank you, Jesus. Um, you go okay. ahead and go first. All right, no problem. <laughs> I just see migraines. Somebody, mm-hmm. yeah, as you watch the replay, mm-hmm. I just command creative order mm-hmm. right now in the name of Jesus. I just come against any of um, anything that's causing you migraines, any stress. I just curse that root of stress off of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just say, be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to just show me if there's anything else he wants to release tonight. So we just say, Holy Spirit, come. Come in your glory. Come in your power. Come in your presence, Lord. Is there anything else that that you want us to declare over people right now? Thank you, Lord. I just keep getting like carpal tunnel, like wrist pain. So I just, I just declare creative order to the wrist pain right now. If you have any carpal tunnel, any, um, Wow, I just see like a like a trauma done to that wrist. I just command your wrist to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you. Um, I want to pray for anybody who's been through betrayal. Okay. Like, a, um, it's more of a inner emotional healing. I usually, inner yeah, healing. More of a, Do it. Uh, it's powerful. So, just pray for anyone that's been through betrayal that um, God just brings healing to your heart. That um, he just begins to release his love over your heart and that all of the hard areas, all of the hurt areas would be healed in the name of Jesus. I just release the angels to go and to minister to you and to um, just bind up your wounds, just bind up the brokenhearted, like the word Mm -hmm. says, and just to bring freedom and healing and refreshment from betrayal. And just want to, um, again, just encourage you to just take some time, pull back a little, take some time 
be healed, be renewed, be refreshed, take some time for yourself. Um, that's really hurtful. So just pray for healing in Jesus. Name. Amen. Amen. I'm in agreement with that. Well, thank you for being on here tonight, Jody. I, I'm just so blessed to see what God's doing in your life. And I know you're, you're working on your masters with Randy Clark and you're involved uh -huh. with, with so many things. It's so awesome to see you to go from glory to glory, to glory, to glory. And, and just seeing your healing gifts grow and, and I'm just amazed to be a part of it to see what God's doing in your life so I just want to thank you for being on here and I just want to to bless everybody's watching I just say keep pressing into the glory keep getting hungry keep, keep crying yeah. out for, for signs and wonders we'll be sharing a testimony of a gold tooth which I had no grid for I've seen it with Charlie <laughs> Shamp and other ministers so good. Like Jennifer Bates and Monday Martin and those that, you know, uh, me and my husband have kingdom flame and uh, we're just allowing the glory to do whatever God wants to do. So we'll be sharing that video shortly. And I just want to thank each one of you and say, be hungry, take risks. Okay. But that's what you can get from this is just take risks, call things out, mm -hmm. in glory, step out yeah. and God will always meet you there. All right. Thank you, April. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. It was so oh, fun. God bless everybody. Bless you. And everybody, that is another glory story for you. So I would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guests talk about on the glory today to just get alone with God and ask Him to help you cultivate His presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that God wants you to be a part of.